Aluminium iron batteries have been generating a lot of buzz recently. For good reason. Aluminium is something that is, well, there's a lot of it, put it that way. Scientists have developed an aluminium iron battery with significantly improved storage capacity. Here's what they did. There's some interesting technical details here that I'll try to simplify. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. A research group has created an organic redox polymer for use as a positive electrode in aluminium iron batteries. Why is this significant? It actually is quite significant because it's adding to the recent improvements and advancements we've seen with aluminium iron batteries, making them a definite possible contender for lithium batteries within a few years. Aluminium iron batteries are emerging as a potential successor to traditional batteries that rely on harder to source materials like lithium. Of course, traditional lithium ion batteries that we use today, or at least the ones that are mostly being made in North America, use either NCA or NCM chemistries in general, which are nickel, cobalt, aluminium, or nickel, cobalt, and manganese. It's very, very common for those batteries to be used in today's EVs. However, this shift we're seeing is kind of a move away potentially from that battery chemistry. Why is this? Well, aluminium is one of the most abundant metals in the Earth's crust. It's also very easily recyclable and its comparative safety and cost effectiveness over lithium make it a possible contender to lithium ion batteries in the future. The advancement though of aluminium ion batteries remains in the very early stages as researchers are still searching for appropriate electrode materials that can deliver adequate storage capacity. A breakthrough in this field has recently been made by a research team led by Professor Dr. Birgit Esser of the University of Ulm and Professor Dr. Ingo Crossing and Anna Fischer of the University of Freiburg and headed by Gautier Studer. The team developed a positive electrode material composed of an organic redox polymer based on phenothiazine. If you've never heard of phenothiazine, well, I hadn't either. Phenothiazines are a group of nitrogen and sulfur containing heterocyclic compounds labeled as the first generation typical antipsychotic medications used for the treatment of schizophrenia, bipolar disorders, controlling nausea and vomiting, and other psychotic disorders with delusional manifestations. Now, Obviously, um, it doesn't really sound like it's got much to do with batteries, does it? In 1876, methylene blue, a derivative of phenothiazine, was synthesized by Heinrich Cairo at BASF. The structure was deduced in 1885 by Heinrich August Barnthinsen, and he then synthesized phenothiazine in 1883. In the mid-1880s, Paul Elbridge began to use methylene blue in his cell staining experiments that led to pioneering discoveries about different cell types. He was awarded a Nobel Prize based in part on that work. And he became particularly interested in its use to stain bacteria and parasites. Now getting back to the actual batteries, in the experiment, aluminium batteries with this electrode material stored a previously unattained capacity of 167 milliampere hours per gram. The organic redox polymer thus surpasses the capacity of graphite, which has mostly been used as an electrode material in lithium batteries to date. And graphite is really, I mean, while it's great for batteries, it holds nowhere near as much energy density as other theoretical cathodes and anodes as well. Now, what people are trying to do is to use silicon, which will hold much more energy density, but there's problems with silicon as it expands and contracts in the battery use process, and those haven't really been overcome yet. The results of this trial using these electrodes was able to surpass the capacity of graphite. And what this means is that the energy density of these batteries could theoretically be higher than those of lithium. The electrode material is oxidized during the charging of the battery, thereby taking up complex aluminate anions. In this way, the organic redox polymer 
manages to insert two anions reversibly during charging. The researchers used the ionic liquid ethyl methyl lemadizoleum chloride as an electrolyte with added aluminium chloride. Now, SciTechDaily.com says that after 5,000 charging cycles at 10 Celsius, the battery retains an incredible 88% of its capacity. 5,000 charging cycles is an incredible number to be able to hold 88% of original capacity. The study of aluminum batteries is an exciting field of research with great potential for future energy storage systems, says Gortia Studa. Our focus lies on developing new organic redox active materials that exhibit high performance and reversible properties. By studying the redox properties of these new polymers in chloroaluminate-based ionic liquid, we have made a significant breakthrough by demonstrating for the first time a reversible two-electron redox process for a phenothiazine-based electrode material. Now, these results were amazing, but what was even more amazing than the 88% of its capacity after 5,000 charging cycles was that at a lower Celsius rate, i.e. a longer charge and discharge time, so not supercharging the batteries, the battery actually returns unchanged to its original capacity. Meaning theoretically, after 5,000 cycles, as long as the battery is charged the right way, it could potentially have 100% of its original capacity. So how long could these batteries last? Well, no one actually knows yet. They haven't done enough cycle charging with them. With its high discharge voltage and specific capacity, as well as its excellent capacity retention at fast C rates, the electro material represents a major advance in the development of rechargeable aluminum batteries and thus of advanced and affordable energy storage solutions. This project was actually funded by the German Research Foundation, and I believe that the researchers working on this are not driven to get some sort of amazing contract, you know, perform some sort of SPAC reverse merger. They're legitimately working on a product which absolutely may transform the world of battery technology. Now, aluminium batteries are not something that have been really kind of hyped very much. Not many people really talk about them. But based on these results, if these polymers can be mass manufactured, if this anode could be mass produced, they could be absolutely game changing because in theory, this battery will just go on lasting forever. Now, of course, there's no battery that will ever truly last forever. But the question is, how long could they last? If they keep this kind of capacity after 5,000 charging cycles, then clearly these are the perfect solution for energy storage because they could potentially last 50 years or more. And the price, well, seems very reasonable. Apparently, the researchers say they could mass produce a battery pack like this theoretically at a lower cost or around about the similar cost to an LFP battery pack today. So what are your thoughts on this, guys? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.